Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Inverse Kinematics just returned to Godot. It used to be there in 3.x. It was removed with 4, been completely rewritten, started with 4.4. We started getting Inverse Kinematics features back, and then in 4.6 beta, we've got a ton of new Inverse Kinematic functions, and now I'm going to explain why you should give a damn. If you are not an animator, you may not know what Inverse Kinematics is, and that is why we are here in Blender. So first things first, we have to sacrifice this default cube because that is what you do. So when you're doing bone-based animations, you've got something called an armature. An armature is composed of bones. So you think of this one, let's say this particular bone right here, I'll name them in a second. So basically here, I was going to edit mode, and what I'm going to do, so let's guys say we're making an arm with a forearm and a hand. So I'm going to select this end bone right here, hit E to extrude it out, so we have another bone, and do one more. So there we got, so we got here, this is, let's go up and expand that one out. So here you can see our armature is made up of these three different bones. Right now we have the root bone selected, and we'll call this one uh, upper arm, my terminology is terrible, lower arm, and then this one we will finally call hand. All right, so there is a very typical straightforward bone chain. And what this is by default going to be set up to use is something called forward kinematics. That's very straightforward. Basically, it means, so this is the parent. You see these guys are inherited from it. The parent moves like so. All of the children move as well. Uh, if you're in pose mode. <laughs> All right, here. So you see, parent moves, children move. Parent rotates, children rotate. So I grab something higher up in the chain, and then only its children will rotate. Ditto here, only it will move. So it's basically a straight hierarchy, very straightforward way of animating, and that is what we would call forward kinematic. Now there's also the option called inverse kinematic, which as you might be able to apply from the name, reverses that whole thing. Now there's a little bit more involved in setting this one up. First things first, I'm gonna come back here to edit mode like so, and we are going to duplicate our hand. And we're gonna move this over a little bit, and what we're gonna do is hit Alt P, so it is no longer parented. So you'll notice right now, there's like this little line showing that it's part of this armature. We don't want that. So hit Alt-P and clear parent. So that means it is now all on its own. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rename it. So this is our IK target. So now what we're going to do is instead of animating from the shoulder to the forearm to the hand, we're going to actually have the hand be in control of things. So what we're going to do is go to the hand and we're going to set things up for inverse kinematics. So come on. Uh, so here with it selected, go to uh, pose mode like so. And you're going to notice there's this new option over here. We're going to add a new constraint in called inverse kinematic. Now there's a bit of setup here. First thing you got to do is tell it the armature like so. And then the target. The target would, of course, be target. So now it is going to move the armature to go to that target. And you see immediately there is the result. That's it. That's inverse kinematics. That's how you set up inverse kinematics. Now you can do a bunch of things here. Like for example, if I only wanted the forearm and the hand to be updated, I could actually come back here to this guy right there. And we can then say, okay, well our target is uh, armature again. Our bone is, I believe it's upper arm. And then our chain length is two. So now what that'll do is only have two items in the chain like so, effect, so that, that the, the arm itself stays completely still, and then we're moving it around. So that is a quick, easy demonstration. That is inverse kinematics. By the way, that is also how you set up inverse kinematics in Blender, so you're getting a two-for-one tutorial here. Uh, very cool, and you can actually use a mix of forward kinematics and inverse kinematics in the same scene. That is a very common thing to do in rigs. Well, the thing is, in the world of Blender, uh, sorry, of Godot, uh, with this version right here. So Godot uh, 4.6 beta, we now have kinematics in the scene. So you're going to see the exact same thing here. We have this setup. So this is an armature right there. You can see the armature uh, not being controlled. So I can even actually come in here and I can turn the, in the inverse kinematics off completely. Look what happens to our armature. It just falls to the ground. Uh, so that is inverse kinematics in action. Uh, and then you're going to see we've got this object in the scene. And then when we animate said object, like so, and run that, you're going to see it automatically is trying to find it. You've also got this hand being controlled to grip the handle. That is being handled through another mechanism over here. That is uh, this one right here. So if I turn that one off, you're going to see the hand drops it immediately. So that is what positions this bone chain towards this particular object. It's basically the exact same thing that we just saw from the world of Blender, but now you could do it inside of Godot. This gives you the ability to do things like dynamic chains and ropes or tails. Um, all kinds of animation options open up as a result of this. Also, again, it inverts the way you animate. So in this case, you set up the bone for this 
chain robot arm or whatever it is, but you're actually controlling this by moving this guy around. So if I actually move this in the animation sequence, so if I actually, uh, let's just do that there. So let's grab one of these points. If I take one of these gun rotations like here, uh, and I actually move it, the whole arm should update accordingly. So let's go ahead and run that. So there you see, it's gonna try and get a hold of it. Now it can't reach it because I moved it out of space. Uh, now another thing we've got here, another demo that they've released is this one right here. Now this is the same thing, but you can see we actually have this magnet in place as well. So here, this is the IK chain. This is what's controlling it. There are a number of different options here, by the way. So come here and you search for IK. You're gonna find they've added CC Dick, Fabric, and Jacobian IK. Basically just different ways of accomplishing this, different settings uh, available to them. But we also here, so this is our modifier there. You can see in the settings what it's targeting. We've got this here thing called the magnet. Well, this magnet is this little ball right here. And when it moves around, like so, it's going to have a couple of the objects in this chain trying to get a hold of it. They're moving towards it. It's another one of the options that you can do with the inverse kinematics inside of Blender. There's actually a ton of new features that they've added, and they've also done this excellent new blog post basically explaining how inverse kinematics got taken out, how they've been added back, and how they work. It goes into a hell of a lot of depth. You now have the foundations of what exactly inverse kinematics is and how you could go ahead and use it. So now you can see it is back. So it was in Godot 3.x. It was removed during the upgrade to 4. It was explained why they did it, but basically it boiled down to the old skeleton API uh, had some issues. So uh, now uh, they've done some new things. So the skeleton modifier was implemented in 4.4, avoided adding immature features and hastily removed them again to implement IK. They staged elements for the entire IK across three different versions. So this is how we got here. So in Godot 4.4, they added a couple of new things to the skeleton, uh, skeleton modifier 3D node, specifically look at modifier, which you can see right here. And that's basically the head bone that is controlling up here is looking at another object in the scene. Very straightforward. Uh, so they added that one, and they also added the retarget modifier 3D. So uh, they implemented it. Confirmed users may specify the bone axis on which the bone rests. It was my initial concern that the retarget feature implemented in 4.0 discarded the bone rest for the imported skeleton. Uh, so uh, attempted to preserve the bone rest by implementing retarget modifier 3D. So that was a part of, again, paving the road for getting there. In Godot 4.5, they added a few more things. Uh, this is basically where we got jiggle physics. Uh, you can see a less obscene version of jiggle physics in action right here. And that is the in the form of spring bone uh, uh, simulator 3D. So basically, these are bouncy bones. I don't know what you might want to do with a bouncy or spring bo springing bone. Uh, there's no reason for the name jiggle physics at all, but it gives you an idea of that functionality. So that was added in Godot 4.5, as was bone constraint with three modifier classes for that, aim modifier, convert transform modifier, and copy transform modifier. And then in Godot 4.6, this is when IK started showing up, or inverse kinematics. So we got IK modifier 3D was added in, and it has seven chops classes. A two-bone IK3D, chain IK3D, spline IK3D, and then the three different implementation implementations of Iterate IK3D, Fabric 3D, CC Dick 3D, and Jacobian IK3D. Uh, get into the details of what each of those is is a bit beyond what I want to do in this video, but just be aware that all of those are out there. So tweak bone constraint 3D. Uh, there are two cases where twist is applied before IK calculations or where the end bone is directed towards the IK target after IK calculations. In 4.5, bone constraint 3D could only assign bones as reference objects, but in 4.6, it can now assign a known 3D object. So this is where you've got, again, that um, gun being used in the scene for handling things. Also have bone twist disperser. You can see the effects of that, and it's dispersing the twist down the whole chain as you're doing. Uh, limit angular velocity modifier is modifier that limits angular velocity. The name kind of makes sense. Uh, and then deterministic IK. Uh, deterministic literally means, you know, given the same input, you'll get the same output. Uh, uh, we've got, incidentally, since Animation Mixer already has deterministic options, that immediately made uh, me decide to adopt this term. Two-bone IK3D and spline IK3D are deterministic. However, in Iterate IK3D, whether it is deterministic, depends on the option. So Iterate IK3D repeats the routine provided by the solver to approach the end bone to its goal. At this point, the number of repetitions per frame depends on the option. When the deterministic option is disabled, it means that the iteration is performed by carrying over the state from the previous frame. In this case, even with a small number of iterations per frame, the end bone can reach the goal eventually as the frames, as the frames progress. In contrast, when deterministic option is enabled, uh, the 
previous frame state is not carried over and therefore the number of iterations per frame is small the bone may end up never reaching its goal oh poor sad bone however if you want to ensure consistent results depending on the relative position between the ik targets and the skeleton the deterministic deterministic option is useful for example it is ideal for online applications where only the coordinate of the ik are shared to synchronize the model's post basically to save um you, you send the details across the wire and the calculation is done locally instead of having to send a whole bunch of updated data. That's where deterministic nature is a good thing. Uh, as a point of note, to determ uh, deterministic IK cannot avoid causing rotations with larger angular velocities by its design. Gozo is saying that limited, uh, limit angular velocity modifier 3D is useful for smoothing that out. And yeah, that is how we got here. Again, you can check out the Magnet version. There is a demo project of that available. And there is a demo project of the other one available here as download as well. So this one here, if you want to start with it, what you want to probably do is check this guy out right there. That's the one that has probably uh, the most approachable detail. But you're going to see the key thing here is you have this armature uh, right here. This is your skeleton. So again, you can see the hierarchy of bones inside of that skeleton. Uh, and then you have the... Uh, aim modifier which is pointing towards uh the the node that it's actually uh targeting at uh so you see if i expand this over here you're going to see it is aiming at the gun node there we have the solver here again there are the three different solvers uh and then the same kind of ideas that we were looking at earlier on this one again is targeting towards the gun there and again if you see it off you there that that's how important this one is to so this is basically what is solving the bone equation here this one is copying uh the transform so this one is uh pretty straightforward let me just stop right there if i turn that off you see this is what would um copy the transform of the particular handle of this gun over there and then the twist dispersion is what causes this to rotate as it goes through so as it moves you see right there the effect of it this kind of causes down a, a twisting object like a rope or a cable or a robotic arm like this. Uh, that is what is solving all of that. And essentially, that is it. Uh, so it's another way of doing animations inside of Godot. Again, many rigs will use a combination of forward and inverse kinematics, and it opens up a whole world of options for you and, and the way you animate. So it's a big deal that this is back in Godot 4.6, probably the biggest new feature of Godot 4.6. And uh, hopefully that all made sense. Again, we started with a bit of a primer for people that have never used inverse kinematics before. At least now you know how you can set it up. Uh, so then this is, again, your traditional inverse kinematics going on right there. And forward kinematics is kind of your default, and it's just inherited from the child up through the hierarchy. Very straightforward way of animating. And again, in the real world, people use a combination of both. And now you can do that in Godot 4.x. Uh, a powerful feature. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, and hopefully my, my explanations weren't too awful. Uh, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.